Hey everybody, it's Rod with Civil Advantage Firearms Training. Uh, thanks for joining me again today. We're gonna do a buy, don't buy review on the Norenko T97 NSR. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is the long awaited review of the T97. I've wanted personally this rifle for a long time. I wanna tell you why that is and then we'll kind of get into the review. Reasons that I've been so interested in this rifle is for one, it enjoys a non-restricted status in Canada. So um, it's a center fire semi-auto, uses 223 or 5.56 NATO cartridges, uses AR magazines, right? Stanag magazines. Uh, it's non-restricted. It has an 18 and well, 18.6, but 18 and a half inch barrel. And you can run and gun with this out in the forest. And this is something that I've been I've gotten really interested in doing personally uh, recently, which is doing a little bit more run and gun and a little bit more training in the forest, out in the bush, rather than at the range. And the, this particular rifle has been really handy. It's also a bullpup that's relatively affordable. So, you know, as far as bullpup options in Canada are concerned, you know, you got the, the Kel-Tec uh, RFB, really expensive rifle. You got the IWI Tavor, really expensive rifle. You have some of the more exotic ones that are non-restricted that are, you know, coming up $4,000. So this rifle runs in its original configuration somewhere around $1,000 or $1,100. With this upgrade, which is the flat top upper or FTU from T97.ca, you're looking at somewhere around $1,300. So I've had this rifle for about eight months. I've run almost a thousand rounds through it. As far as this reliability is concerned, I've heard different stories in different reviews and from different people about, oh, you know, I bought this T97, it's been nothing but a nightmare. It fails to, it, I got feeding issues, right? Um, and then I talk to other people and they're like, oh, what a reliable, you know, rifle that just runs and runs and runs. I've had a little bit of trouble with this rifle and, but overall it's been pretty good. To me, when it comes to reliability, which is probably the most important thing about any gun, it's gotta shoot and it's gotta shoot every time, is it magazine issues. So, and I'm sure you've heard this before. So uh, different magazines will work in this gun. Some magazines will work, some magazines won't work. Uh, Brody and I went out and we did a magazine video. You'll see that on here uh, on the channel. You can check that out. And we tried to, all the magazines that we had between the two of us <laughs> to see if they would work or fit uh, or feed in the T97. We also did one for the Tabor. And what I found, if I looked at, you know, down through the comments, and I encourage you to do that if you're thinking about getting this rifle, is I looked through the comments and I found that some people had the same magazines that didn't work in my gun, worked in their gun, and vice versa. So I don't know what the dimensional issue is in the magazine well in these rifles, or the Tavor to, for that matter. But anyway, I guess they're just finicky. I don't, I don't know why, but anyways. Um, you'll also see in the comments there, which is worth mentioning if you're thinking about one of these rifles, is some people are actually modifying their magazines, like filing the spline down on these magazines and stuff, and, and they, see, they say, well, oh, as soon as I file a little bit of material off there, it worked like a, uh, like a charm. So I'm like, I don't know about filing magazines, but whatever. I've got a, a handful of the magazines that work. Typically GI mags work good in these guns, and um, my LAR-15 mags have been working relatively well in this thing other than one I didn't like one mag and here's a little bit of video of me of it not liking it <laughs> I stuck that mag in there and didn't want to ever come out again um, so I ended up having to shoot the ammo that was in there and try to yank it out later and I was able to get it out so a little bit finicky now uh, as far as the rifles concerned the flat top upper makes a huge difference I did not I've never I've shot the the uh, standard configuration or the original configuration of this rifle with the charging handle you know up under the uh, the carry handle but uh, some of you guys have and it's not a problem or it's really difficult to operate as far as running that charging handle you know give me some comments I I've never shot the rifle and it's in and it's an original configuration but the the FTU or flat top upper comes um, with a rail all the way down so you can put some optics on there that's really important and you can also change which side the uh, the charging handles on to to um, to work with however you want to run this rifle so one of the considerations here is that when you're dealing with a bullpup and even a, even in particular this rifle you have to relearn how to run a rifle all over again right the manual of arms is completely different than a standard configuration rifle like an AR or an XCR or anything like that um, and the, the weight balance is different, you know, everything you do is different. 
but it was worth learning. And uh, I thought it actually expanded my skill set, right? One thing is this is a right-handed rifle, period, end of story. Um, I saw a left-handed person grab this rifle, standing right there, <laughs> gra grab one of these rifles, bring it up to their face, pull the trigger, and split his lip wide open because when the ejection port is at such a spot on here that when, the, when that brass comes out, it comes out at about 100 miles an hour. I saw someone comment and say, yeah, well, it launches the brass back to China, which I thought was, I'm like, it almost does, right? Um, and of course, this ejection port is actually quite a ways back split this guy's lip wide open for shot. Boom, brass in the face. So I'm not gonna recommend this for left-handed shooters or if you're left-handed, you really want this rifle, you're gonna learn how to shoot right. I don't think you yeah, really have much of a choice. Another consideration about this flat top upper real quick, and I know it's not all about the flat top upper, but I would recommend you have one of these on the rifle if you're gonna buy it because it makes it a little bit more practical in some regards. So with the flat top upper, you can put your optic anywhere you like. I, I chose to put my old EOTech, the one that turns itself on and off when I, when I fire the rifle, but that's what I had that was extra, right? And I want to buy a brand new optic, but it's worked really well on here. And I found that when I put my EOTech on here, or sorry, my, uh, my Aimpoint, my Aimpoint Pro on here, it was an issue because the Aimpoint Pro has a big knob on the side, the tensioner for the, for the rail, and I can't access the charging handle any longer, right? Or if I access it, I'm smashing my knuckles on this big, on the big tensioner. What's good on this rifle? Well, the trigger is actually really awesome. If you're familiar with bullpup configuration rifles, the triggers ten, tend to be terrible. And even a lot of Tabor uh, owners out there, a lot of these guys go for that, uh, that Geisley trigger upgrade. It's like a two-part upgrade for that, for that rifle. I don't know if there's trigger upgrades for this rifle, but I had a Tavor and I did an A-B comparison and this, this trigger is awesome. I have no problem with this trigger. I would never spend the money on a trigger upgrade for the T97. What else is good, before I get to the couple of bad things, is where, the, um, where they put the sling mounts. So if you're right-handed like I am, these sling mounts are perfect because they're flat on the, the left-hand side of the rifle, which means I just get a two-point sling right off the shelf, throw this thing on my body and it sits flat against my body the whole time and it's extremely stable. So no need for me to put a three-point sling uh, on here to have that stability if you want to climb up stuff or you want to mess around. Uh, a single point sling I don't think is really an option for this type of firearm because of the way the weight balance is. It's very heavy in the back and very light up front. So even if there was a single point sling mount somewhere, it's, yeah, it could be a little dicey. Ergonomically, the rifle probably couldn't be worse. I'll take that back. I think if if, if they formed a committee to make it worse, they probably could have achieved that over at Norinco. But uh, without trying, they, they, they've done some pretty unergonomic things. So real quick, probably one of the worst things, one of the two worst things about this thing is the magazine release. So of course, with a bullpup, you got to relearn your whole manual of arms. Totally worth it. I don't want to discourage you. Totally worth it. But basically, now magazine changes look like this. So. For this particular firearm, I have to reach around and push the button down back here. Well, one of the reasons why the, um, that's an issue is you can get, number one, the button is very small. Number two, the spring is actually quite hard. So you've got to find this tiny button and you actually got to put a lot of force onto it. You don't want the magazine falling out. That's probably why they made it so difficult, but still. Um, and with the, and this is a bullpup thing, basically when you spin the rifle, and you're trying to get that mag in there, you'll get your clothing caught if you got long kind of loose sleeves, like if you're wearing a combat jacket or something like that, or even any kind of combat uniform, you know, they, they give you some, some room in the sleeves. Uh, clothing will get caught in that, that uh, magazine well. So anyway, but the magazine release, it was, it's terrible, right? And I know there's some upgrades, but I looked at some of the upgrades and they weren't, they didn't look like a really good solution to me, at least at, at, to this point. The worst feature of this entire rifle is the safety. The safety's over here, man. <laughs> like without actually bringing that whole rifle down off target and then taking my support hand off the rifle and turning that safety on and off, you know, like that's, that's, how, you're gonna, that's how you're gonna do it. And it spins 180 degrees. So it's not even like you get a little flick, like you actually have to purposefully turn on and off. Now, why is that even a big deal? It's a big deal be because if the safety's not easy to turn on and off, people won't use it. And for me, I'm okay with the, with the heavy accountability, which is like, I don't use the safety ever, like virtually ever, unless I'm gonna walk across a log and you know, like I know I'm not gonna shoot the gun. Um, I'm okay with, if you don't wanna discharge a firearm, don't, don't pull the trigger. 
and, and I'm good at keeping my finger off the trigger and out of the trigger guard till I'm actually discharging the firearm. So I'm okay with all that. I'm okay with that level of accountability. But maybe just for kind of, um, you know, hobbyists or novices, that's not a good thing because they're not going to use the safety. I did finally clean this gun. It started to fail. It actually ran quite reliably for quite a while until it got totally filthy. Uh, so I had to disassemble it and clean it, and it was pretty easy. It's not bad. It's not like an AR, but you know what? What do you what do you want, right? When it comes to ammo, I've run all kinds of stuff. I ran Barnall through here, right? Um, I, I mean, I make no bones about it. You know, like I'll I'll have good ammo. I got some uh, Aguila here that I got some from Scott over at International Shooting Supplies. He actually provided me ammunition to help me do the review because it cost me money, right? So really great of him. He's deserves a shout out for that but some nicer stuff like that is going to be cleaner you're not going to have to clean your gun uh, as often but I ran so I ran this Aguila stuff that Scott's been um, been selling at the store which is great I mean it's higher quality ammunition so no complaints there but I also ran some super cheap Barnall which I'll put anything in my gun I don't care right as long as it doesn't blow me up right um, and it, it ate everything um, I also had some of that old Norinco surplus ammunition that was floating around for a while and that went through here like nothing too. So I had no ammo issues with the gun at all and it's been feeding quite well. Um, last thing I'll say is sometimes the reviews are mixed for these rifles. I know I've seen some reviews where people are like, yeah, I can't get this thing to run and they've actually done some modifications on the feed ram, like put, like took a file to it. You know, that scares me because I'm not a gunsmith and I don't want to wreck a thousand dollar rifle, right? Or in this case, whatever, $1,300 rifle. Um, but they, you know, people have said, oh yeah, I made a huge difference and now my rifle runs like a champ. I haven't had any feeding issues with this rifle yet. Um, and so whereas some people are like, oh, this thing's been a nightmare since the day I bought it, I actually haven't had too many problems. I mean, I've had, you know, the odd jam and this and that, but it's been fairly reliable. The one thing I will say about this gun is it is really accurate. Um, I'm not somebody that shoots long distances. Like, I mean, hundred meters is like, yeah, it's my comfort zone. But from the standing position with this EOTech, this old school EOTech, I brought this rifle up. Here's a video of it. I am not, not lying. On multiple occasions on video, I just bring this rifle up and I can shoot at 200 meters with an EOTech, right? One time open sight, basically. Just, and I'm hitting a silhouette target, a steel target at 200 meters. So this rifle is a real laser that way. And it's very easy to point, easy to carry around and very light to hold up against your shoulder too, because all the weights in the back, you can hold this rifle up all day long. It's a, you know, a little bit of an exaggeration, but you know what I mean, right? Buy or don't buy? Absolutely. If, you, if you're looking for a rifle to, to do some running gun and have some fun in the bush and, and use your AR mag so you don't have to buy new mags and all the rest of that stuff, I think you'd be really happy with this rifle. So I've been happy. Anyway, hopefully this review helps. If you've got information on the Norinco T97 NSR, feel free to put it in the comments below. If you want to find us on the net, you can at civiladvantage.com. And uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, please do at civiladvantage1. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.